Yeah, so we know that MRD is a very hot topic in myeloma. Uh, there's really three main areas, I think, where the community itself is really looking at MRD as a, as a useful measure. Um, first is prognostication. Uh, we have a lot of data right now coming out, uh, each and every trial almost, that really seems to tell us that patients who achieve MRD negativity, they do better, right? So we know that um, it's a very strong prognostication uh, test that we have. You know, the second area that's a little bit more challenging is in regards to you know, using it as a surrogate endpoint for clinical trials. Um, and that, you know, we have working groups that are currently working on combining patient level data to actually use that um, to help obtain FDA approval so that we can expedite uh, results from clinical trials, uh, getting them into practice. But the third area where I'm really most interested in is you know, can we use this for clinical decision making? And I think that there's a lot of potential for that. But there are a few things that sort of stand in our way, and one of those is really getting consensus from myeloma clinicians about when we should be measuring MRD, what technology should we be using, what sensitivity uh, is required. And that's what I really set out to, to look at in a survey, a global survey, of myeloma clinicians. And Overwhelmingly, everybody was using MRD. About 90%, just over 90%, were sending some MRD test of some fashion. But only about 37% were actually using it for clinical decision making. And so the questions that we wanted to sort of ask with this um, survey was, to, you know, what are the reasons why people aren't using it for clinical decision making? What makes up that other two thirds? And when we look at that, uh, the overwhelming response was there is no consensus on the actual timing of uh, testing. Uh, and one of the other areas that I think is um, you know, uh, a challenge is how deep should we be testing? So only 50% of our respondents were measuring using 10 to the minus 6 uh, for MRD, which has really been shown to be the best. Uh, you know, if we had to choose a single test, that seems to be the most sensitive. Uh, and so thinking about where this is going to be leading us forward, I think we have to use this kind of information to help us guide uh, MRD-guided um, uh, clinical decision-making tools. So, for instance, if we have um, a patient who's in maintenance therapy, could we use MRD to help guide uh, the duration of that maintenance therapy? Because the current standard of care is to continue with maintenance therapy essentially indefinitely, because that's where that's where the trials looked at. Um, there is the IFM 2009 trial that actually stopped maintenance therapy after a year. And if patients were MRD negative at the end of that year of maintenance therapy, uh, by at 10 to the minus 6th using NGS, they had about a 25% relapse rate at three years. And so that really stimulates the question, is there one single test to rule them all? And I'm not sure that there is. It might be that we have to use complementary methods, PET, next generation flow, next generation sequencing, to really help guide uh, who are the patients that are going to be these durable long-term responders and who are the people that are going to have uh, an earlier relapse.